In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how me and Dave fit one of them. Now I need to initially give a massive shout out to a guy called Chris from Titan Batteries. He sent me that, the Titan 150 amp power Bluetooth enabled lithium battery. You're gonna see two different types of battery installations. You're gonna see a lead acid battery underneath here with all the gubbins, the split charge, etc. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna show you us fitting all that and how we achieved all this. And I've also got a handy bit of info on how you can get a budget friendly entry point into lithium batteries. And by the way, you didn't see this. This is coming in a future video. You haven't seen that, all right? <laughs> Roll the video. Oh, one battery. I've got two of those buggers <laughs> and all the gubbins that come with it. I'm just gonna mention one thing off the bat here. Everything might look a bit mismatched in these videos, the power video, the bed video. It's all being filmed in a bit of a mumbo jumbo way. This is half the bed frame. By the time this video goes out, the bed will already be made. That video, so don't worry about it, all right? But we're gonna get the power installed today. So I've got two leisure batteries, all the gubbins, split charge, um, a cut off switch. We've got some USB panels as well. Everything's gonna be loosely fitted today just to make sure that everything actually works. And then on the second half of this video or where I decide to cut it, we're gonna do a second video where then the carpet will be in, the installation will be in, and then the switches will be in. Anyway, let me get the rest of the stuff into the van. Let the fun and games begin. It wouldn't be an electrical video without good old Dave outdoors. Yeah, you're good. So yeah, I got Dave helping me today. He's, uh, let's just say, a little bit more knowledgeable on the old uh, automotive electric side of things. Um, I'd probably end up blowing myself up. And um, we don't want to see that in a video. Maybe some of you do, who knows? And this man today is giving me a hand. <laughs> nice and bright and early, 6 a.m. in it. <laughs> it's light enough, isn't it? <laughs> Right, should we get cracked on then? Let's do it. Nice one. So we've got to link the two batteries up. Um, as I was saying before, to make the batteries in loop together, what a lot of people will do is they'll use that as your positive, and then they'll use that as your earth, okay. and then they'll just sort of, so it's like using this battery as like a, a jump battery, if you like. Yeah, yeah. But no, we need to, to make both batteries in a loop, so it goes through both batteries. You need that negative there onto an earth, and then on the other battery, you'll need this positive then to use to power. So obviously when it's charging, etc., you go going through both batteries, yeah. Nice. And that's what we'll do today for you. And that's why Dave's here, because I wouldn't have a bloody clue. <laughs> I, I haven't either, mate. Yes, you have. Don't, don't lie. Any don't lie. <laughs> Look what I've gone and made. Oh, bloody fell fire, boy. <laughs> so that is all that's going to go on this board. We've got the fuse box, got the isolator switch, and we've also got the um, split charge relay there. So yeah, fingers crossed, that'll all go underneath the bed quite nicely once we get the board in place eventually, which will probably be the second part of this video. Leave a comment below, tell me what you guys think I should do. Should I carpet these back windows or block them off or insulate them in some way? Or should I leave them as is? I think... Uh, I might do a couple of camps in it once it's all carpeted and just leave those windows as they are for a, about a week or two, just while I do a couple of camps and just see how the van copes with the condensation on those back windows and how much heat's lost. I don't really want to uh, lose that much heat or have loads of pools of water at the bottom of these windows here. So uh, yeah, leave a comment below. If you've done the same or you've got a similar van, um, have you blocked off any windows? What are the benefits, what are the negatives? Let me know. So what are you do now then, Dave? How far have you got? Right, okay, so uh, we're looping the batteries now, so we've got to put a donor to, to each one. Um, so the negative is gonna go from here, just to your earthing point here. Yeah. Positive, obviously, will go from this battery, and then that'll go to your um, your cutoff switch first, and then to your fuse box, etc. Okay. It's always important as well <laughs> to keep these cables the same length, the positive and the negative. Um, okay, okay. So obviously that's- Is that because of the voltage that runs across a certain length of wire and all that kind of stuff? I ain't got a frigging clue, mate. <laughs> I've, I've always been brought up to keep, keep them the same, I'll be honest. Okay. Leave a comment. Yeah. Uh, tell us the science behind that, please, because we don't know. I've got someone else coming along to try and give us a bit of a hand here. Who's that? <laughs> so we've just drilled through that little drill bit there has gone through to the bottom of the van now that's going to be where we're kind of routing our split charge relay um into the actual vehicle battery that's underneath the passenger seat 
we've got the van up on the chocks. Dave's brought some chocks with him and uh, you can see the drill bit going through, which is good. So yeah, we're gonna just slowly but surely increase the size of the drill bit, try and get a slightly bigger hole, and then we can start getting some cabling through. Obviously, yeah. We're just observing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just got a bit of supervision here, but I'm doing all the work. That's it's it, it's gone. Yeah. Right, same thing, waggle it's it around. Waggle it around. Same, same around. again, yeah? Yeah, waggle it around. All right, so we've managed to drill through that little piece of metal there. Got the conduit through as well, with a little bit of uh, pushing and pulling. Now, the wire that goes through that little hole that we've made in the uh, chassis of the van, then comes through and Dave's just fed it through the bottom there of the battery compartment. So now, Dave just mentioned we're gonna fuse this here. Um, what are we gonna use to fuse it, mate? What's, what's the thing? All right, so in the kit, you get a fuse holder. Yeah. So it's gotta be fused vehicle battery end so pre split charge relay, yeah. and then you've got a fuse one uh, post split charge relay. Okay. Um, so these are like failure points for safety, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So if the current exceeds the fuse rating, Pop. it just pops the fuse yeah, right yeah. here and it protects the system a bit more. Okay, okay. Um, so, bro, right, I'll get this cut and then we can start doing some more terminal crimping. <laughs> Working and learning. <laughs> <laughs> just um, don't film this bit. <laughs> <laughs> if you. Um, if you come over to my channel, you'll see how it's done properly. What's this all about? <laughs> I'm going by your direction, thank you. Don't blame me. <laughs> so what he's are you doing, it, Brendan? He's got it, he's got it. Oh. Um, okay, so from what I've learned in the last about 30 to 35 seconds, I'm cleaning part of the under tray here of where the... It's a chassis cross member. The chassis cross member, that's the one, yeah. that's the one. But why are you cleaning that? Because we're gonna be attaching the cables so they don't droop down and drag on the road and then start ripping out my battery while I'm driving. Yeah, so we've got some securing um, ties to put up on the chassis cross member, haven't we? That's it. Alrighty, everything should be in place and working now. We've got temporary fixings here for now until me and Steve finish the bed. I have no idea when this video is going to come out. I think um, the bed video will come out first, then this one, I don't know. So you guys are probably watching a mixed match. But anyway, everything's where it needs to be. Everything's where it needs to be in the front as well. Dave, you want to give us a quick run through of what's been achieved so far then? Yeah, so literally what we've done is we've, we've got the cables mounted for your batteries to put them into um, so they can work in conjunction with each other. We've got the split charge relay mounted, we've got the cutoff mounted. So some of you might be looking at this going, oh, well, that's too tight, that's not good, that's rooted wrong. Don't worry. As Brendan just said, it's just temporary. He's got to move it all anyway, so we've given him enough cable for him to be able to manoeuvre stuff him, anyway. Really? Yeah, so once the bed's in, once you and Steve are finished, you can manoeuvre this, you've, you know you've got plenty of cable. Uh, the cutoff's in, the cutoff goes obviously from the battery into the um, positive side of your fuse box. Obviously, we've earthed that as well. We have earthed to the main vehicle body. We're just gonna see if everything that we've done so far, connecting the batteries up to the fuse box, etc. We've got a little light here that might be going into the van at some point. So it's just a nice little visual aid to see if we've got power. So uh, let's have a look then, mate. Put it on the positive and the negative and see if it um, lights up. Hey, up there you Whee, go. We got light, we got power. Part two of today's video. Let me just start by addressing the elephant in the room. I know I look like Jim Carrey off Dumber and Dumber at the moment. I am booked in for a haircut, I do assure you. Um, the van's changed somewhat since we uh, started this video. You'd have seen it by now. You'd have seen me do the carpeting and the privacy curtains, but we have a big update to today's battery install. So at the start of this video, you'd have seen me and Dave fitting some lead acid batteries just underneath the cubby right there. <laughs> That's a long time ago as of making this video. We're talking a fair few weeks. And since then, I've had a lovely chap called Chris contact me from a company called Titan Batteries. And they've offered me one whopper of a lithium battery. It's in this box right here. They've also sent me some gubbins as well to go with it. We've got a Victron DC to DC charger. And this is their flagship 150 amp hour lithium battery. Bluetooth enabled so I can check it on the phone and see what level the battery is on because when the lead acid was in, I had no idea what charge the battery was on. So I could have been doing something, no clue what actually I had power-wise in those batteries. But this is one serious upgrade. I'll go into more depth about the Titan battery a little bit later on as we're filming it. But for now, I'm gonna get the gubbins out and then start getting it all placed up and seeing where things are gonna go. That's about, what, half the weight of the two lead acids? Joe, you know when I installed mine, there's sod all the way to it. Yeah, you get yeah. You compare that, because it's a normal replacement for a, a your typical lead acid. Yeah. It, it's just so much lighter. Yeah. And I, yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't believe when I put them hand in hand, 
I couldn't believe how much lighter that was compared to... Because Dave, if you don't know, has already got the same battery as this. What did you say to me, that this was four times the equivalent of the lead acid that I have? Yeah, so this battery is the equivalent. So this standalone battery on its own is the equivalent of three 142 amp hour lead acid batteries. And because I was running 110, this one battery on its own is the equivalent of 410 amp hour lead acids. Because with lithium, you can actually run them down to zero, or as opposed yeah. to lead acid, you can't go below 50%, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much so. Lead acid, 40, 50% is the normal rundown for them. Okay, right, so now Dave's gonna feed me some wire underneath the driver's seat there. I'm gonna grab it and basically put where the old wire was um, earlier on in this video from the initial split charge through back to the battery compartment just so we can connect it to the alternator. And then we've also then got power with the new one. Right, hang on a minute. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. I got it. Okay. Do you know I actually bought the proper tool for uh, crimping the ends onto here? Oh yeah, so you won't have a bit of the old wanker's claw like you had last time. Christ, I didn't like it. You know what? That was a fair old grip last time we had to have one. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. So I've decided three times on where I'm going to put this battery and I've finally come to the final resting place and where it's going to be. So in the first install with the lead acid, you'd have seen that it was underneath there before the panels are on. Was the insulation in? Maybe the insulation was in, I can't remember. But before the panels were on, the two lead acids were underneath there. Then I had the idea of putting this beast back here because it fits perfectly across the rear of the bed here. But then we have the dilemma of once that's in place and then once we've fixed all the gubbins in place again, if I ever want to take the bed out and give this van a proper clean, i.e. take the carpet out, professionally clean it, etc., and just generally take the bed out for any reason, really. If you've got a van, why not utilize it? If I'm gonna move house at some point in the future, I may not want this in here for a couple of days, just trying to move some things around. So me and Dave had a discussion and we've decided on the final resting place for that battery is gonna be just there behind the driver's seat, far enough away from the diesel heater, because we're gonna have actually one of the vents that goes on the diesel heater to direct the hot air coming this way as opposed to towards the battery. And I'm gonna try and make some kind of housing um, maybe like a little shelf, I guess, that probably goes across the end of the bed there, that's gonna then hide the battery behind some wood. And I think that's probably the most practical place to put it. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I'd say so, mate. Yeah, I mean, obviously the hot air is gonna be diverted away. Yeah. And to be fair, the diesel is not gonna be on when you're driving anyway, so it's gonna be cool. Yeah, you still got a bit of the old wanker's claw there. Oh yeah, baby. Where did you learn to cut? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> right. That's why I'm so shit, because I didn't. <laughs> Tell you what, guys, if you need a straight line, cut in. Use your man. <laughs> so after roughly fixing the fuse board and DC to DC charger, we moved the bed out to find a good earthing point on the van body. So we've now routed the cable from underneath the vehicle where I was tying it up earlier on. From the front, where the battery area is, we haven't actually connected it yet, just so we don't electrocute ourselves. <laughs> and then Dave's currently wiring in the live feed, or what will be the live feed, coming from the alternator uh, into the live of the Victron unit, Dave? Is that, yeah. is that the right terminology? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, when I'm trying to push stomach in, I always make like a weird face, a bit, a bit like a. <laughs> <laughs> that could sound so wrong as well. <laughs> We've got to connect it to the vehicle battery. Yeah. And then you've got to run it up on the app. Have you downloaded the app already? No, but I can get. It we'll do that after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Titan app tells you how much wattage is going in yeah. and how much current your amps is going through. And I had 31 amps. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it was just, just over 30 amps going into the battery from the alternator. And I think that was equating to around 444 watts going straight in. Jesus, and so that, nearly and as good as my Morrison special. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. Free power. Yeah, you couldn't beat that, could you? Way I've back. already been away with mine, just yep. to test it out. And I, I was away for um, three nights and I came back and I had to bear in mind, because it was quite cold, I had the diesel heater on, had all the lights on, etc. And um, when I got home, I checked it, because I'm a bit of a nerd, wanted to check, uh, and I was up to 92% battery. Just from coming on? Just from drive, to drive home, Jesus, yeah, yeah. wow. And then the solar yeah. throughout the week yeah. has just topped it back up. Wow. Yeah. 
So the combination of that with a diesel heater, I don't think uh, I'm ever going to be cold. I'm not going to be lacking yeah. of power, and obviously we're going to get the headliner on a bit later on, and we'll have lights as well. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below. If you guys want to check out Titan batteries, you can go have a cheeky look at them and see if uh, they can do something that uh, is going to be more suited to your needs. I've got the flagship 150 amp hour, but Chris has told me that they also do an entry level 80 amp hour, which I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is the equivalent of two times 115 amp hour yeah I, I, yeah so the 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 smaller titan battery is i think that was the equivalent of two 110 amp hour lead acids yeah yeah i think it's on their website anyway, although, although the figures actually say 80 amp hour you think well how can that be double but it's because the lead acid you can't drop below 50 percent without damaging the batteries can correct it? yeah yeah um so obviously having a lithium uh, the 80 amp hour is a fantastic entry point if you're on a lower budget but thankfully Chris has sent me the flagship, so we are never going to be lacking in power. So shout out to you, Chris and Titan Batteries. I really appreciate you sending it to me. Yeah, not too tight with them, that's it. Perfect. So just explain what you're doing right now, mate. Uh, just connecting the wire um, to the battery so this this wire here that we rooted under the vehicle earlier um comes from the um the b2b basically okay so this is basically what's going to give your leisure battery the charge um from the alternator while the engine's running yeah, yeah. just give it a while just to mm -hmm. kick in right so we just connected to the titan app and that's what's currently running through the battery right now, over 400 watts of power, and we're just sat here idling. What a brilliant piece of kit this app is. 30 point, well, 30.6 amps going through into the leisure battery now. Yeah. This is why I prefer using this app to the, um, to the Victron, the Victron one. one. Yeah, yeah. See, what a difference night and day between that app mm -hmm. and that. And oh, God, yeah, yeah. to see it actively, how much charge you've got. I'm assuming that'll go up live as well. It will go up live, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And you've got the temperature of your battery there as well? Cell temperature inside, yeah. Jeez. So obviously the reason they've put that in um, is because lithium doesn't really charge in below zero degrees. And am I right in thinking as well that in the next couple of weeks they're going to bring out some heated battery? A heated battery, yeah. yeah. For those of you that remember the carpeting video, you'll have heard me say that I carpeted the wrong side of the headliner. Well, now it's come to bite me back in the ass. Right. Okay. I think, push it towards me a bit. Whoa, fella. Does that? Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> right, okay, my head's here, all right, okay. <laughs> right, <laughs> we need it, for <laughs> sake. We need it in place today, mate. Fucking tapping <laughs> around like yeah. that. Ooh, where's this going? <laughs> Ooh, I see. Get yours in. Yeah, it's in. Right, that is the headliner back on. After a bit of uh, to and fro in between each other and trying to rest it up on our heads, we finally got it back on, including the sides. A couple of little bits here that we can brush up and try and cover the actual wooden trim underneath. Um, little bits here, maybe we'll try and uh, neaten up at some point. But why don't you give us a little uh, explanation, mate, about what we've done so far? And uh... um, oh yeah, I've done nothing. Um... <laughs> no, just a quick look at what we've done then, guys. So, um, obviously the wire in here, just a disclaimer this is only temporary this wine it's all going to get cut down and, and done nicely uh, we've only left it like this because brendan's going to be taking all this off at some point and putting a board as on as he said earlier so what we've done is we've gone from the battery to our battery cut off to the fuse box and then obviously that's going to be powering our that's where the power is going to be coming from for our consumers we've got the diesel heater plumbed in as well so the diesel heater will actually stay permanently on um or the lcd will but um, I'll pass you back to Brendan for the big reveal. Yeah, so we're gonna be using the cutoff switch uh, in the meantime, before we actually put switches in the circuit, before we, um, so basically, so the LCD screen doesn't stay on the diesel heater, and also so these don't stay permanently on. But if you would do the honors, Dave, and uh, please uh, give us the old cutoff switch turn. Three, two, <laughs> one. There we Way, go. there we are. We got six spotlights in the headliner. Job. Well done, mate. Well done, buddy. Well done, mate. Good work. That is us done for today. Massive thank you to Chris from Titan Batteries for sending me their flagship 150 amp hour lithium battery. 
absolute diamond for sending me that and for also sending the Victron DC to DC charger as well. Couldn't have done it without the products. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely stoked now to get on some camps. Use the diesel heater, we've had it fired up already. It's still working, thankfully. And of course, a big thank you to this man. <laughs> I've always here. Thank you ever so much, mate. It's a good job I live literally around the corner, isn't it? It is, mate, it is, yeah. <laughs> Dave's skill, knowledge, and tools has made this all possible today. I'm also gonna leave a link to Dave's channel in the description, along with a link to Titan Batteries as well, if you wanna check out uh, Chris's batteries from Titan Batteries. Um, like I said earlier on in the video, they do do an 80 amp power battery if you're looking for an entry level into lithium. Next week, where are we going? Next week, we are off to myself, this man, and possibly Gordon, a Shropshire lad, another YouTuber. We are off to the NEC at the Outdoor Expedition Show, which is gonna be great. There's gonna be van stuff, there's gonna be hiking, wild camping, stalls there. It's gonna be awesome. And if you haven't already, they were free tickets, so you've missed out by the time this video goes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. I was going to make everyone super happy. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry to piss on your parade. <laughs> um, but after the Outdoor Expo show, we are going to be heading out into the Shropshire Hills in the vans for a camp.